In a world where chocolate fight for survival, ink and chocolate endure danger and adversity to witness these brutal battles and share their victories and defeats with you. Today, Jersey Milk takes on Dairy Milk. It's the epic battle between the sweatshirt farm and the bovine barn. Get ready for... Chocolate Apocalypse! We're here today to witness the brutal fight between two chocolate brands, Nielsen and Cadbury. It's going to be a vicious battle today, folks, especially since the losing chocolate will be sentenced to death. Dan Gerlouver is in the field to find out what that death will be. Thanks, Elise. We're in the trenches of the chalk apocalypse. What we got here is the jar of death. This will determine how one of these chocolate bars will meet its demise. And now the draw. The death is in my hand. I repeat, it is in my hand. <laughs> Burning by flame from a lighter. Thanks, Dan. Well, John, it looks like the loser today will be facing a fiery, melty demise. Pretty brutal stuff. It's shocking to think that either the dairy milk or the Jersey milk will meet its end in such a way. Now, is it correct that these are both common gobble chocolate variety? That's right, John. But although they can both be found in any grocery store, they're both strong contenders and we don't know which one will come out on top. You know, I actually used to be a dairy milk fan myself. Really? I can't imagine that. It's true. I once happened upon a one kilogram dairy milk in the wild, and boy oh boy, let me tell you, that was a hard one to fit in my mouth. Unbelievable. I've never heard of a chocolate of that size getting so large, especially considering it comes from the climes of England. It's due to the harsh North American diet, John. Right you are, Elise. I'm sure this chocolate won't disappoint. I've got high expectations for it. Now on to the Jersey Milk. Do you have any previous encounters with this one? Not since Halloween, when they would often camouflage themselves with other candy, hitching a ride in their goodie bag to migrate to a new neighborhood. This is a carefully evolved self-defense mechanism you rarely see in chocolates of this variety. That's really interesting. You know, when I look at the packaging, it's quite unique. It's not often you see a completely white package. It's like it's trying to attract a connoisseur of chocolate by its milky color. Right you are, John. It will be interesting to see which one is creamier. Let's go to the field to find out. Dan, are you there? I'm here with Professor Poot Poot. She's a leader in the chocolate fighting rituals. She's been around a while. She's seen her chocolates. We're just waiting to unwrap these babies. Oh yeah! All right, Dan, whenever you're ready. Professor, are you ready? I am. We, we begin by carefully adjusting the spine of the chocolates. You see, one must not snap in the wrong place uh, or, or the chocolate becomes unbalanced and, and is, is less palatable and it, 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 it weakens. It, it weakens. It. Look at that snap. Yes. And now it is time to tear open the inner membrane. Uh, we must be very, very careful here, as, as one wrong move could send the chocolate flying. Ooh. Indeed, we wouldn't want that. I'm sure we all remember the chocolate disaster of 96. All right, we have the chocolates fully unwrapped. They're ready to battle. This is going to be great. And oh man, look at that color. Did you know that Dairy Milk actually had a slogan of a glass and a half of full cream milk in every half pound? I'm sure interested to see if that still rings true. Interested indeed. I guess we'll have to see. Now for you viewers at home, the first trial these chocolates have to go through is the nose flavor, where its scent is put to the test. All right, well, we will begin the first uh, test of the, the nose flavor. Uh, in which Mr. Louvert and myself, uh, Professor Poot Poot, will uh, give our recommendations on the smell. 
Uh, Mr. Louvert. Thank you. I would say I had some good chocolate smell. Just what you'd expect a chocolate to smell like. Mmm, milk chocolate. I, I believe it, it has a bit of a, a wild flavor. It is quite creamy and sweet, but, but yes, you can a hint of that, uh, uh, yes. We've just done the nose flavor test, and now it's time for the mouth feel and mouth flavor test. Let's go. Pew! <laughs> So you've just tasted them and we're anxious to hear what you think. Professor, what are your thoughts? I find that the dairy has the, the, uh, the fresh cream taste uh, from the farm, the, the, the dairy. Yes, it's a, it's a very excellent flavor, very uh, smooth and, and sweet, yes. All right, the dairy milk has a very creamy flavor and a very smooth taste, blending the cream and the chocolate together. Oh, yum. Exciting stuff. Well, we got one down, one to go. How do you think the Jersey milk will do, Elise? I don't know, John. That dairy milk was a strong fighter. But, as you can see, the Jersey milk has some strong lines, so I'm really looking forward to see how it holds up in the mouthfeel test. Ah, but first, the nose flavor. This one's almost flavorless. I think it's going to get his butt whooped in the fight test. Well, now, 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 uh, it, it has, it has a scent, not as wild as the other, perhaps, but, uh, it, 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 yes. I think it's too calm. Well, now. We must continue to the mouth feel and the mouth flavor test because that's that's where the chocolates the chocolates really shine. Shall we? Ow! Now on a side note, did you know that Jersey milk originated in Canada? I did not know that. Now I am even more curious to see how this chocolate does. Dan, Dan, how are you doing? Can, can you describe the flavor for us? Thanks, Elise. Now with the Jersey milk, just like with the nose flavor, the mouth flavor falls a bit short and the mouth feel falls a bit short. It's not a bad chocolate, but it doesn't blend well. It's not a good contender. What are your thoughts, Professor? My thoughts on the Jersey milk are, uh, it, it, yeah. I can't remember, it wasn't that good. Thanks, Dan. You've really put those two chocolates through the ringer. I can safely say if the Jersey Milk were your partner in the chalk apocalypse, you'd be stuck doing all the work. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the Dairy Milk? Well, I think that if the Dairy Milk were your partner in the chalk apocalypse, you die a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy. Well, it's been a fierce clash of creaminess, but only one chocolate can be crowned the winner. That's right, John. Dan, Professor, you've been right there in the action, and based on what you've tasted, which chocolate would you say has won this battle? Absolutely, Elise. Uh, we've got an inequivocal, clear winner in this one, and it is... Dairy, Dairy milk. milk! Thanks, Dan. And a special thanks to Professor Poot Poot, who provided valuable insight into these fierce and proud chocolates. Now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, the execution. But first, there's a competition to see who will kill the losing Jersey Milk chocolate. That's right, Elise. Now we're going to go back to the field where Dan is about to interview our executioners. Dan? Thanks, John. What we have here is two chocolate executioners more than willing to go up against each other to find out who's going to execute the chocolate. To determine who's going to execute, we're going to play a game called 369, where they're going to take turns counting, and every time they hit a 3, a 6, or a 9 in the number, they will replace that number with meow. Now we're going to talk to Mermaid Murder. Mermaid, tell me in your own words how you'd like to kill this chocolate. 
absolutely, Dan. You know, I've seen a lot of chocolate and none of them have been a match for me. I will take that chocolate, I will snap it in two with my bare hands, then I'll slam it to the ground and I will melt it with that lighter until it's crying for its mama. <laughs> wow, that's exciting stuff. Next up, we have Executioner Steve. Steve, would you describe to me how you'd use a lighter to kill the chocolate? Well, that was, um, uh, uh, let's just, let's move on. All right, you ready, executioners? Let's begin. One. Two. Now. Three. Four. Five. Now. Seven. Eight. Meow. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Meow. Fourteen. Fifteen. Meow. Seventeen. Eighteen. Meow. Night. Twenty. I lost! You're going down next time, foo! <laughs> you can't match my wits. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, we would love it if you clicked on that like button to let us know we're doing a good job. And of course, be sure to subscribe to Ink and Chocolate so that you don't miss a single episode. If you would like to suggest a death for losing chocolate, go to inkandchocolate.com slash die chocolate die and vote for your favorite demise. If laughter is the best medicine, your face must be curing the world. <laughs> no, no, I'm not insulting you. I'm describing you. <laughs> it's better to sit there in silence and let people think you're an idiot rather than open your mouth and prove them all right. <laughs> if ever I wanted to kill myself, I would climb to your ego and jump to your IQ.